Hey guys, in uh, my previous video about my Beretta 92X, I mentioned that I have a kind of a trigger play issue uh, and, and I think I finally got it. And uh, today is the video to show how I plan to kind of polish the parts to solve this issue. So let's see whether that will work. Uh, Let's get down to it. Uh, magazine already removed, and there's safety check, right? Nothing in the chamber. So first I will show you where the issue is again so that we know what we're dealing with, right? So after you rack the slide, I have a little trigger play here, which means the trigger bar will stay down here and it's not able to go up, which means there's a little trigger play here, if you can see, there you go, right? Ideally, after you rack the slide, the trigger should not have that play and it should be staying here and the trigger bar should be, should be all the way up. So after some studying, I think I found where the issue is. The issue, let me show you, is right here. Basically the end of the tail, or the tail of the trigger bar, as you can see here, is, is grinding at, let me put it at the right angle, it's grinding at the uh, the surface of the hook area of the hammer, right? And because the surface is not very smooth or whatever, once you rack the slide, it's not able to go up by the spring, by this uh, trigger spring. This trigger spring, by the way, I've already tried, this is, um, uh, I believe from uh, Wilson Combat that this is a brand new one still is not a, uh, strong enough to push the thing up because as you can see if I push it down it's not able to go up which I believe is because this surface is too coarse and uh, what I plan to do today is to take it apart and try to polish here and uh, also here uh, the uh, hammer side and also check the uh, what does it look like on the uh, trigger bar side and see if I polish this and make it super smooth, whether this solves the problem, right? Because if you wiggle it, you will feel that it's very hard for it to move up and down. Um, well, I could be wrong, but it's worth a try. Now, let's remove the slide. Side. Now let's start to take this apart. And I believe the first step is to remove this pin right here. Half of it inside, and then this will come out. Okay. Spring will come out. So I have the LTT package on it. All right, so um, there might be parts that was replaced, upgraded by London Tactical, which I don't remember exactly which parts. Looks like we need to remove this side of the panel as well. By the way, this is lock rips from lock rips G10 uh, panel, which is super light, super good. Mm -hmm. Next step, I believe, is to take this uh, slide stop out. 
slowly, 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 and then slowly, slowly, slowly. Put a spring in there. Yep. And there we go. Put it aside. And now the uh, spring is also used as a uh, retention thing for the trigger pin. So now we can lock this, hold this, and then we can punch the uh, trigger right out. Yep. This is the trigger pin. This is the spring. Actually, I think I need to remove the remove the safety first. So now this is a tricky one. This pin is super super small. Okay, so I basically made a piece of small this kind of thing, uh, and then I stuck into this hole, and then I used you know a cloth to protect the frame surface, and then like this, and then you know use a hammer to knock on the the, uh, the stick, right? Just like this gently, and it's not very hard. And it will come out, the pin will come out from here. That's about it. It's a little bit scratch mark, but it's okay. It's hidden. And now, let's see. Is it enough to uh, come out loose? Probably not yet. So let's see whether we can just pull this out. Okay, it's moving. Hey! Let's see. Gently pull it out. Don't damage anything. Let's see. Yep, it's far enough to pull this side out, I think. Alright. Let's see, now how do we... It's blocking it a little bit. Oh! How did that happen? <laughs> Interesting. Anyway, anyway. It's able to come out. Now let's take a close look at the tail of the uh, trigger bar. This is a LTT London Tactical shortened trigger bar, I believe. So the tail is a kind of sharp triangle kind of thing. It has a very sharp edge. I don't know whether I should do anything about it. Probably not. Not yet. Uh, I don't want to, because um, LTT, they know what they're doing. They're way, way, you know, better than me. They are professionals. So I don't want to really change their work and risk, risk anything, okay? I just want to take a look at this surface on the, uh, on the trigger bar. Uh, no, on the hammer. So let's see. Now, take the safety out. Oh. Man, did I lose a spring or what? Hopefully not. That's my bad. I didn't anticipate that. Should have used my hand to cover it. Okay, now. Mm, supposed to be able to just slide this out. There's not much, not much tension here. Pretty easy to do. And now, here we go. Here is the, uh, here's the hammer. Now let's just wipe it clean so that we can check 
what does the uh, contact surface look like? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just rub rubbing right here, right? And this is the surface that is contacting right here. So this is the place that we want to probably polish a little bit because it's pretty coarse. It's not as smooth as here, which is like a kind of a mirror, almost a mirror polished surface. Where if you rub it here, it's like you can feel like there's no, no resistance or frictions at all. Whereas when when it, if it works here, then it's you know definitely not good. So let's try to polish right here. Okay. Um, originally, I tried to polish it directly. Go just go straight to polishing. But I didn't actually see the paint coming off or whatever. So I think that's a sign of, you know, being uh, uh, not quite ready for polishing yet. So I changed to sanding. Looks like we still need to do um, sanding first before polishing. Therefore, I changed to this head on my polishing tool. I, I believe this is the finest uh, kind of sandpaper so that it's not super aggressive. And what I did was just do a super short touch, 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 because you don't want to accidentally, you know, sand away too much material. So I just, you know, quickly touch, touch, touch uh, this surface as well as this surface. So immediately I see the, the original, you know, black paint came off and uh, it's starting to show this kind of a, you know, white, polished surface so i think this is good enough for the uh, next polishing step so this is uh yeah i just want to show you guys uh, the surface is already smoother than before you know uh, but it's still not as a as smooth as a kind of mirror finishing like this side i believe this is what uh, Maybe this is what the London Tactical did to really, really polishing this surface. You can feel this surface is super, super smooth, whereas this one is still a little bit, you know, coarse, but it's already better than before. So now let's switch back to this polishing head, get some more polishing uh, compound on it, and then just go. For polishing, you can be a little bit more aggressive because this is not a really uh, harsh um, material. So you can try uh, polishing it a little bit harder. Let's get down to it. Okay guys, result. Uh, now I touch it, it feels like super, super smooth. Same feeling as this one. And you can see it is much shinier as well. Um, so this surface and this surface, I believe, are the surfaces where this, um, yep, this trigger, the, the, the tail of the trigger bar will eventually touch. And now if I rub on them, it's already feeling, you know, much smoother. So I believe, in theory, this should solve the issue now that if I, you know, put more uh, oil on it, lubricate it more, it should be able to solve my trigger problem, right? So let's clean it up a little bit and then start to put things back. Okay, now that I've oiled or greased up all, pretty much all of the uh, components, all of the parts, now let's put things back together and see how how it works. So, trigger strut drop in there. Mm -hmm. Next hammer. Hammer goes against this plate kind of thing. And then they, uh, is there a particular way? Probably not. And then the retention pin or the hammer just slide it in. And let's see, basically everything, the reverse, the reverse kind of sequence. Right? The detent, safety detent. Safety detent spring. And the detent itself. 
Okay. Okay, okay, that's the right. Now the right side. No. Now the right side of the safety. That needs to go through this. Push down the detent the uh, detent pin. Just let it stay there. The left side. The left side of the uh, safety goes like so. I think. Nope. And wait a minute. Nope. Not quite. Just going there. And then push down through the hole to push the uh, to push down the detent. Even the right way of doing it? Yeah, I think so. Push down the detent. There we go. Okay. This side goes in. This side leaves some space for the um, trigger bar. Let's see. Trigger bar goes into this channel and comes here. That's right. Okay, except you need to put the trigger in place so that it can slide right through. Right through the trigger. There we go. Right through the trigger, and the trigger bar should sit well inside here. I think so. Yep, and then I think now we need to put the spring back in so that it has power to push it push up. Okay, turn out that is the right side is already in place, so no no problem. Just need to put this pin back in. Okay, good. We shouldn't, we shouldn't need a lot of force on this pin. I think that's about it. Yep. Okay, what's next? Next is the trigger pin, I believe. The trigger uh, spring, I believe. Should be going like this. Okay, now, which side? Is this symmetrical? Looks like completely, uh... Seems to be completely symmetrical. There, there, there we go! Yay! There we go. Okay, the trigger pin is in here, now we need this spring to hold it together. Yep. And this side, this side of the spring should come up. Yep, there's a groove for it. Okay, rotate, it go in. There we go. Alright, now the last one is the triggers the pin was not perfectly aligned which is why this hole looks so weird okay. all right now that is in place just keep knocking it Do too much, otherwise it's gonna damage the frame. I'm gonna use this one. That's about better center. Now, regarding this part, is it able to do better? Alright guys, that was part one to polish the uh, hammer and actually after polishing the hammer I realized that it helped a lot, you know, it smoothened 
this, the contact surface between the uh, hammer, the hook area, and the um, the trigger bars rear uh, smoothen that contact point a lot, and I can see it's able to move way smoother than before. But it did not completely solve the problem because after I wrecked the slide, it was still um, like having a difficult like a move to move up. So it still stays below. So then an idea came to my mind, which is, you know, what is the force that is pushing the trigger bar back onto the, uh, the hammer? That force, if we reduce it, then uh, the uh, the force that in uh, you know kind of enforces the contact will be weaker, and then hopefully the uh, trigger bar spring will be strong enough to push the trigger bar up, right? Always be able to do that. Right now, it's like the uh, the trigger bar spring is um, relatively too too weak to do that, and there's no really stronger uh, trigger bar spring. There is you know uh, weaker ones made by Emantech, but not stronger ones. But and also at the same time, I probably don't want a stronger one. So then the idea is how to reduce that force. The answer would be the trigger return spring. The trigger return spring is the 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 thing that makes the trigger go forward. You know, the reset and at the same time also to push the trigger bar back. Then I tried this. I bought this uh, reduced force. Um, Trigger return spring from Eben Tech. I think this is 15% uh, lighter, and this uh, you know should work for 92x performance. So I swap it on. So the whole process is very similar than you know I've shown you before when I took apart this whole pistol. Now this is my old trigger return spring, and the new spring is already in it. Uh, there's you know a. Uh, 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 it doesn't look a lot different. It's just the hole seems to be bigger, but you know, uh, other than that, you know, the installation is uh, super easy. You don't have to take the whole gun apart. You just need to remove the uh, slide stop, and then you can, you know, punch this thing out, and then you can in, um, install the, the the new trigger return spring in. So you don't have to touch anything else. So it's a very easy swap. Then. Everything, I believe, um, after that, it worked. So let me show you. Um, see, now if I manually push this thing on, it's able to move up all by itself, okay? And well, previously, even before the polishing, after the polishing, if I push it down, it uh, tends to still stay there. And then now you can see it's able to come back up, right? Still, you know, struggling a little bit, but, you know, it's definitely able to, to do that. I think probably 90, 95% of the whole thing. So I think definitely the polishing makes a lot of difference. I do not think only by changing the trigger return spring, it will be able to solve this whole problem because, you know, now you can feel much less friction here, although still some friction, but much less because the surface is so smooth now. Now, if we put everything back, right, uh, let's verify from the uh, kind of end users or how do you say it, the end to end, uh, uh, perspective, right? Whether this you rack the slide, whether the trigger trigger bar is able to move all the way up to the front, and the, whether the trigger is able to stay um, in the back, and the, you know there's no more trigger play. So. Reset everything. Okay. Rack the slide. Here. No more trigger play. All right. This is super good. Let me show you again. Drop the hammer. Rack the slide. Now. 
no more trigger play. This completely solved my problem. I'm super happy about it. You can, uh, if you're interested, you can compare with the behavior just now versus the, uh, you know, the start of the uh, video where I show you where the problem is. So now it's a proven that this solves the problem. So uh, my 92X performance is a, I don't know, secondhand or at, at least it's not a new gun. I don't know whether the uh, problem exists for more 92X performance guns, uh, whether it's only for, it only happened to my gun because the previous owner did something. Uh, I can doubt uh, for such a high-end pistol, it comes out of the factory like that. So probably my the previous owner did something uh, or abused the gun in some way or whatever. But, you know, I asked on the internet or I searched on the internet, seems like some people had or have the same problem. So if you have the same problem, this, I'm telling you, this is the way to fix it. Um, it doesn't really impact, uh, practically, it doesn't impact anything. It's just my OCD to fix this is not really a problem because this trigger play only happens on the first time uh, when you shoot, right? Uh, because it only happens well, if you start with the uh, you know double action, it's fine. It 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 it, it only happens uh, the first time when 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 you rack the slide, um, or I think you manually lower the hammer as well. But anyhow, that play only exists on your first trigger pull, um, because on all the future trigger pulls, when you're shooting, uh, you don't really uh, take away your 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 finger, right? So you shoot and then hammer drops, it fires, and then even before you're able to reset your trigger, the hammer uh, pulls down, the hammer moves, uh, the, sorry, the, the slide moves and it's able to you know, cock the hammer way before your finger resets. And as long as your finger doesn't reset, and when the hammer drops, uh, you will not have this trigger uh, play problem because the trigger bar is still forward that contact point you know between the trigger bar and the hammer has not you know they are not meeting yet they're not contacting yet therefore there's no uh, trigger play problem right so your finger is still there so which is why you shoot round after round it will not be a problem because the slide will always move way way faster than than, than your finger right so it only happens when you uh, shoot, let's say, for the first time, you load it, and then you wreck the slide, and then you will feel that your first trigger pull will have some unnecessary trigger play. It might, might be a problem, might not be a problem, So, but what I'm saying is, to me, it's still worth fixing. And the result is just awesome. No more annoying trigger play, only valid the pre-travel. All right, and I believe this is 15% less uh, weight uh, trigger return sprain. Also, it feels really good, you know, because previously I thought the original one to me is still a little bit heavy, and now it's not super light uh, compared to a CZTS2 racing grain. If you have one, I have one. Uh, it's not the the uh, pre travel is not as light as that. It's not like a non existent, but it's still quite perceivable, but it's not as heavy as before. So I, to me, I think this is, uh, might be better for a competition. It might give you more fun uh, at the shooting range, but not, right? So anyhow, I'm super happy that this is a victory. And thank you for watching. Hope this video helps. See you next time.